States. So I want to bring in former J.P. Morgan Chase economist Anthony Chan and Bonson Group CIO and case for dividend growth author David Bonson. All right, Anthony, 25 or 50 basis points on Wednesday. I think let's 20. cut straight to the chase. Oh, let's cut right to the chase. 25, Charles. And the reason for that is we got a, a pretty strong employment report. We got a, no, a stronger than expected uh, real GDP report. The real issue is how does the Fed message this? It's like a smoke alarm you put in a kitchen. If you're putting in the smoke alarm because you're protecting yourself against the fire, the markets will love it. If you're putting in the smoke alarm because you smell smoke in the other apartments, the markets won't like it. Damn it. It's a good analogy. I, I agree that they'll do 25, and I agree the messaging will be very important, but I actually will make a prediction what the messaging will be. They're effectively going to guarantee the next 25. It'll have the effect of being a 50 basis point cut, even though they won't technically do the second until September. The question mark that I can't offer a prediction on is whether or not they're going to just stop the balance sheet reduction. They're still quantitatively tightening now. They're still kind of pulling some liquidity out of the economy. And the president started bringing that up in some of his tweets lately, I think that that's interesting. Is there a possibility that they may just say we're done doing what, that? Weren't they scheduled to wind that down, though? Yeah. Like in that's going to go in September, so yeah. it's just a matter of time, and yes. they're almost close to the end, so there's not that much more quantitative tightening. Okay, so a week or so ago, New York Fed President uh, Williams, uh, he, he, he sends the market uh, up higher, and he shifts the narrative where the uh, all of a sudden, everyone started thinking 50 basis points this Wednesday. And he talked about the idea that because you have so few arrows, that's exactly why you should use a lot of them. In other words, it's not enough for them to nickel and dime uh, the worrisome, worrisome uh, you know, drifting inflation, that if they're going to attack this thing, it should be firm. So if it were 50 basis points, would that smoke alarm say fire or would the smoke alarm say, hey, this was a brilliant move to make sure that there's never another fire? The short answer is that if it's 50 basis points, it gets a lot harder to, to describe it as just putting in a smoke alarm. It really suggests that somehow they're smelling smoke. And that's why the Federal Reserve has to be careful. Does that mean they won't do 50? Absolutely not. In fact, I think they will continue. I agree with David. They will continue to lower rates gradually. But again, lowering them too aggressively in one shot does raise Raise the, issue, the, raise the risk that the markets may misinterpret it. You, you have a Fed funds futures market telling you that there could be a third rate hike by the end of the year. Right. It's over 50 percent chance that they're anticipating a full 75 basis points coming off that rate. And I agree to go do all of it at one time. It may very well be more stimulative, have that bigger punch in the effect, but it does really damage Fed credibility and takes away some weapons into the future. Right now, there isn't a recession threat. They're not really worried about recession. It could come later. The, the, the numbers last week concerned me about the business investment going slightly negative. That's not what we want to see. But right now, you can't call something an insurance cut if it's aggressive. I agree with Anthony. If you go, I guess, the last five or six rates, uh, rate cutting cycles, the last two, they began with 50 basis points. They had one, and it began 100 basis points. And I think not long ago, it was even 125 basis points. In other words, the Fed has a history of getting behind and then having to come out aggressively. And I feel like Powell may be concerned about that. And that's why you, you really have to wonder, okay, they're telegraphing at least two or three this year, uh, <clears throat> would the market will react? How will the market, you think, react? Well, first if it's only of all, Charles, one minutes? important fact is that the average easing cycle is about 500 basis points. They don't have 500 <laughs> basis points to go. So if they start really strong, they basically have very little ammunition to go on uh, later. And given the fact that they've always told you that they're data dependent, they move 50 basis point now really hard to justify. Are you worried about their expanding uh, scope of things that seem to have influence now in their decisions? I've been worried about it for over 20 years, and I, I'm sorry to be pessimistic because I'm a very optimistic guy, but we haven't seen nothing yet. We're headed to a far more relevant Fed in American economic life in the next 10 to 20 years. Congress is not going to control spending. We're headed to Fed using monetary policy to impact an awful lot of areas. And this is exactly right, Charles. No. The historical precedent, they were starting off at 4 or 5% Fed funds rate. They're at the mid twos now. They don't have that much room to go. I think we will not see another recession in my lifetime where they don't do more quantitative easing, and I don't like it. Well, they said that. They said that those unconventional tools will be conventional, and you're right. Both political parties want the Fed to become the piggy bank to support their spending. Yeah. Gentlemen, two, two legends, folks. Anthony and David, thank you both very much. Great conversation.